Today, we received an experience shared by a mother on behalf of her daughter. She described a vivid and detailed near-death experience where she miraculously interacted with Jesus and the revealing message she received. Please stay until the end to fully understand what he went through. My name is Brother Joel, and I narrate near-death experience stories, rapture dreams, visions, and testimonies on Spirit Revived. Kindly subscribe, share, like, and comment to help our growing community. And now I read. I never imagined I would die at just 12 years old. But there I was, lying on a hospital bed, feeling weaker and weaker by the minute. The doctor told me I had a rare illness. They tried everything they could, but nothing worked. My parents were crying beside me, holding my hands tightly. I wanted to tell them not to be sad, but I couldn't speak. My eyelids felt heavy, and soon, everything went dark. Then, out of nowhere, I felt as light as a feather. When I opened my eyes, I was floating above my body. I could see my parents and the doctors standing around my bed. They looked really upset. I wanted to tell them that I was okay, but they couldn't hear me. Suddenly, a bright light appeared in the corner of the room. It was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. The light grew bigger and brighter, and I felt like it was pulling me in. As I got closer, I felt warm and happy. All my fears and worries vanished. I floated into the light, and everything changed. I found myself in a beautiful garden. The colors were more vivid than anything I had ever seen on earth. The grass was the greenest green, and the flowers had every color imaginable. Some colors I had never even seen before. The air smelled sweet, like a mix of flowers and freshly baked bread. Soft music played in the background. It sounded like a thousand angels singing in harmony. The music made me feel calm and loved. I knew I had reached a special place. As I looked around, I noticed a man walking toward me. He wore a white robe that seemed to glow. His face was kind, and his eyes were full of love. I immediately knew it was Jesus. I had seen pictures of him in church, but seeing him in person was different. He felt more real than anything I had ever known. Jesus smiled at me and said, Welcome, my child. I've been waiting for you. His voice was gentle and warm, and it made me feel safe and happy. I wanted to hug him, and before I knew it, I was in his arms. It felt like the best hug ever, like all the love in the world wrapped around me. Jesus took my hand, and we started walking through the garden. The grass was soft under my feet, and with each step, I felt stronger and healthier. We reached a big tree with golden fruit hanging from it. Jesus picked one and handed it to me. Eat, he said. This is the fruit of life. I took a bite, and it was the most delicious thing I had ever tasted. It was sweet and juicy, filling me with energy. As I enjoyed the fruit, I started to remember all the questions I had about heaven and God. I wanted to know everything. Jesus, I said, can I ask you some questions? He smiled and nodded. Of course, my child. What do you want to know? I thought for a moment. There were so many things I wanted to ask, but one question stood out. When will the world end? I asked. Jesus looked at me with kind eyes. That's a big question, he said, but it's not something to be afraid of. It's something to look forward to. When the world ends, it means I'll be coming back to Earth to make everything right. I nodded, trying to understand. But how will we know when it's happening? Jesus smiled. There will be signs, he said. People will hear about wars and natural disasters. Many will turn away from God. But those who love God should not be afraid. They should be ready and keep doing good things. What happens after the world ends? I asked. After that, Jesus explained, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. All the bad things will be gone. There will be no more sadness, pain, or death. Everyone who loves God will live with him forever. I thought about that for a while. It sounded amazing, but I still had more questions. What about the people who don't believe in God? I asked. Jesus looked sad for a moment. God loves everyone, 
and wants everyone to be with him. But he also gives people the choice to love him back. Those who choose not to be with God will be separated from him. That's why it's important to tell others about God's love while there's still time. I nodded, understanding the importance of what Jesus was saying. So what should we do while we're waiting for the world to end? I asked. Jesus smiled brightly. Live your life with love, he said. Love God with all your heart and love others as you love yourself. Help those in need, forgive the people who hurt you, pray, and read the Bible to know God better. And always remember, I am with you, even when you can't see me. We continued walking through the beautiful garden. I noticed other people there too. They all looked happy and peaceful. Some were singing, while others were talking and laughing. It felt like one big happy family. As we walked, I saw a big book on a golden stand. It was the largest book I had ever seen. What's that? I asked. That's the book of life. Jesus answered. It contains the names of all the people who love God and follow him. I was curious. Is my name in there? Jesus smiled and nodded. Yes, it is. And so are the names of many others. But there's still room for more. We kept walking and soon came to a crystal clear river. The water sparkled like diamonds. This is the river of life, Jesus said. Its water gives life to everything in heaven. I bent down and touched the water. It felt cool and refreshing. When I stood up, I felt even stronger and happier than before. As we walked along the river, I saw many animals. Lions were playing with lambs, and eagles were soaring in the sky. None of the animals seemed scared or hungry. They all looked peaceful and content. In heaven, Jesus explained, all of creation lives in harmony. There's no fighting or hurting each other here. We reached a big, beautiful city. The walls were made of precious stones, and the streets were paved with gold. But the gold was clear, like glass, and I could see my reflection in it. This is the New Jerusalem, Jesus said. It's where God lives with his people. The city was full of light, even though there was no sun or moon. Jesus explained that God's glory provided light for the entire city. As we walked through the city, I recognized many people from Bible stories. There was Moses, David, and Mary. They all smiled and waved at me. I felt so happy to be among them. We came to a big throne in the center of the city. It was more beautiful than anything I had ever seen. This is God's throne, Jesus said. From here, he rules with love and justice. I looked at the throne in awe. I could feel God's presence all around me. It was overwhelming, but in a good way. I felt completely loved and accepted. As we stood there, I heard voices singing. It was the most beautiful music I had ever heard. Angels and people were praising God together. The sound filled me with joy, and I wanted to join in. Jesus looked at me and said, it's almost time for you to go back. I felt sad. I didn't want to leave this wonderful place. Do I have to? I asked. Jesus nodded. Yes, my child. You still have work to do on earth. People need to hear about God's love. You can tell them about what you've seen here. I understood, but I was still a little scared. Will it hurt to go back? I asked. Jesus hugged me again. No, it won't hurt. And remember, I'll always be with you, even when you can't see me. He took my hand, and we started walking back through the garden. As we walked, Jesus gave me one last piece of advice. Remember, he said, no one knows when the world will end. But that's not the most important thing. What's important is how you live each day. Love God, love others, and be ready for when I come back. I nodded feeling both sad to leave and excited to share what I had learned. As we got closer to the bright light, Jesus stopped and looked at me. Are you ready? He asked. I took a deep breath and nodded. I'm ready. I said. Jesus smiled and hugged me one last time. Go with my blessing, he said, and remember, I love you always. With that, I felt myself floating back through the light. Everything got blurry for a moment, 
and then I opened my eyes. I was back in my body, in the hospital bed. My parents were still there, looking worried. I took a deep breath, and they gasped. The doctors rushed over, surprised and happy. My parents hugged me tightly, crying tears of joy. I knew I had a lot to tell them about what I had seen, but more importantly, I knew I had a job to do. I needed to share God's love with others and live each day as if it could be my last. Even though I didn't know when the world would end, I wasn't scared anymore. I knew that no matter what happened, Jesus would be with me. And one day, I would see that beautiful garden again. Thank you for watching to the end. Please help us get this message out to the rest of the world by forwarding it to all of your family, friends, and loved ones. If you haven't already, kindly subscribe to my channel. Please do so right away so that you can receive other videos on God's word in the days and weeks ahead. I am grateful to you and may God continue to bless you till our next meeting. From all of us at Spirit Revive, stay safe till we meet again.